Welcome back to episode two of BI Mystery Files Sales Crash. If you missed episode one, I do recommend you go and watch that first to understand where we're at in the mystery. But as a quick recap, we received an email from management asking us to investigate a recent drop in sales of our Snuzzles toy range. We started looking at the Shopify sales data and did indeed uncover a major drop in sales, with the Snuzzle Glow Edition taking the biggest hit. But stock levels were fine, fulfillment was normal, and nothing in the Shopify data could explain it. So now we follow the money. Today we're diving into the Google Ads data to find out if a drop in sales had anything to do with our paid marketing. Maybe the ads stopped running, maybe the click-through rate collapsed, or maybe there's something else lurking in the numbers. Today we're going to find out. As explained in part one, if you want to follow along and solve the mystery yourself, all the data files are free to download this week. Submit your theory using the link in the description before the final episode airs for a chance to win free enrollment to one of my flagship BI programs. Good luck, let's jump in. Just like yesterday, I've uploaded a CSV file containing our Google Ads data to Looker Studio. In our report we built yesterday, I'm going to first add a new page, rename both pages, and then add the new data source to the report. In terms of analysis, let's start, as we did yesterday, with a few key headline KPIs. Impressions, clicks, cost, and conversions. We'll also want to calculate CTR, that's click-through rate, by dividing clicks by impressions. We'll add a new field and write our formula. Some clicks divided by some impressions. And then another field for CPC, or cost per click, which is cost divided by clicks. With CTR, I'm going to need to change the number format to a percentage, which I'm actually going to do like I did yesterday in the data source itself. And these are the fundamental KPIs for search ads. Now we'll want to plot these KPIs out over time in a time series chart, just like we did with the sales data yesterday. And again, we only have data for the month of June. And there it is again, a clear drop in impressions. But if we look closely, the drop happens not on the 22nd, but on the 25th, three days later. I'm going to add some more metrics to the chart so we can get a better understanding of what's going on. Let's check out clicks. A similar story. And now conversions. Aha! Conversions dropped on the 22nd, which ties in perfectly with the drop in sales. That obviously makes sense. So it's a conversion issue. Is this across all campaigns or just for specific ones? To check this out, I'm going to add campaign as the breakdown dimension in this time series. Hmm, that is a mess and almost impossible to make sense of. We're going to have to visualize this differently. Instead, I'm going to put campaign into a table with our KPIs and see what that shows. Now, to make things much easier to read than the plain numbers, I'm going to turn our metrics into bars instead, 
which is done in the Style tab, like so. And then in View Mode, with Conversion selected, I'm going to filter by the affected dates. Aha! We have the culprit. It's the Snuzzle Glow campaigns. They're showing zero conversions for that period. So what does this tell us? Well, if an ad stops receiving impressions or clicks, it might mean it was disapproved, paused, or otherwise prevented from running. But impressions and clicks weren't the issue, at least not from the 22nd. It's only once the ads stopped getting conversions that they would deliver less and therefore clicks fell as well over the following days. The fact that it's conversions that suffered means the problem is almost definitely occurring after the click. What does this mean? Well, there could be two possibilities. First, it could be a conversion definition problem, but this would be unlikely because the same campaigns were receiving conversions prior to the sudden drop and conversions tend to be set up at an account level. So it's more likely to be the second reason. It means that it's probably an issue on our website once the user is directed there. So we're going to have to dig even deeper. To do this, we're going to need to look at our website traffic data. So we're getting closer to solving the mystery. Tomorrow, we dive into the Google Analytics data to follow the user journey from click to checkout. Let's see if we can find any clues hiding in the on-site behavior. Don't forget, you can download all of the data for free this week and try to solve the mystery yourself. Submit your theory before the final episode airs and you could win free enrollment to either the BI Analyst Starter Program or the BI Consultant Masterclass. Details are in the description. Thanks again for watching, sleuths. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you tomorrow in part three of the BI Mystery Files. Until then, bye.